Exodus 1. Now these are the names of the sons of Israel who came to Egypt with Jacob. They came each one with his household. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin. Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. And all the persons who came from the loins of Jacob were seventy in number. But Joseph was already in Egypt. Then Joseph died, and all his brothers and all that generation. But the sons of Israel were fruitful, and increased, and multiplied, and became exceedingly mighty, so that the land was filled with them. And a new king arose over Egypt, who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, Behold, the people of the sons of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it be in the event of war, that they also join themselves to those who hate us, and fight against us, and go up from the land. So they appointed taskmasters over them to afflict them with hard labors, and they built for Pharaoh storage cities, Pithom and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and the more they spread out, so that they were in dread of the sons of Israel. So the Egyptians brutally compelled the sons of Israel to slave labor, and they made their lives bitter with hard slave labor in mortar and bricks, and in all kinds of slave labor in the field all their slave labor which they brutally compelled them to do. Then the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shifra, the other was named Pua. And he said, When you are helping the Hebrew women to give birth and see them upon the birth stool, if it is a son, then you shall put him to death. But if it is a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt had spoken to them, but let the boys live. So the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this thing and let the boys live? Then the midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife can come to them. So God was good to the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very mighty. Now it happened that because the midwives feared God, he made households for them. And Pharaoh commanded all his people, saying, Every son who is born you are to cast into the Nile, and every daughter you are to keep alive. Luke 4 Now Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was being led around by the Spirit in the wilderness, for forty days being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days, and when they had finished, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. And he led him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, I will give you all this dominion and its glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you worship before me, it shall all be yours. And Jesus answered and said to him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And he led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said to him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had finished every temptation, he left him until an opportune time. And Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread throughout all the surrounding district. And he was teaching in their synagogues, being glorified by all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, And he opened the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. And he closed the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all were speaking well of him and marveling at the gracious words which were coming forth from his lips. 
And they were saying, Is this not Joseph's son? And he said to them, No doubt you will quote this proverb to me, Physician, heal yourself. Whatever we heard took place at Capernaum, do also here in your hometown as well. And he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet is welcome in his hometown. But I say to you in truth, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was shut up for three years and six months, when a great famine came over all the land. And yet Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. And all the people in the synagogue were filled with rage as they heard these things. And they stood up and drove him out of the city, and led him to the edge of the hill on which their city had been built, in order to throw him down the cliff. But passing through their midst, he went on his way. And he came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and he was teaching them on the Sabbath. And they were amazed at his teaching, for his message was with authority. And in the synagogue there was a man possessed by the spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice, Let us alone. What do we have to do with you, Jesus the Nazarene? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked it, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him down in the midst of the people, it came out of him without doing him any harm. And amazement came upon them all. And they were talking with one another, saying, What is this message? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the report about him was spreading into every place in the surrounding district. Then he stood up and left the synagogue and entered Simon's home. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked him to help her. And standing over her, he rebuked the fever, and it left her. Immediately she stood up and began waiting on them. And while the sun was setting, all those who had any who were sick with various diseases brought them to him, and laying his hands on each one of them, he was healing them. And demons also were coming out of many, shouting and saying, You are the Son of God. But rebuking them, he was not allowing them to speak, because they knew him to be the Christ. When day came, Jesus left and went to a secluded place, and the crowds were eagerly seeking for him and came to him and tried to keep him from going away from them. And he said to them, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other cities also, for I was sent for this purpose. So he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. Job 18 Then Bildad the Shuite answered and said, How long until you put an end to your words? Show understanding and then we can talk. Why are we regarded as beasts and dents in your eyes? O you who tear yourself in your anger, for your sake is the earth to be forsaken or the rock to be moved from its place. Indeed, the light of the wicked goes out and the flame of his fire gives no light. The light in his tent is darkened and his lamp goes out above him. His vigorous stride is shortened and his own counsel brings him down, for he is thrown into the net by his own feet and he steps on the netting. A snare seizes him by the heel, and a device snaps shut on him. A rope for him is hidden in the ground, and a trap for him on the path. All around terrors frighten him, and harass him at every step. His vigor is famished, and disaster is ready at his side. The firstborn of death eats parts of his skin. It eats parts of him. He is torn from the security of his tent, and they march him in step before the king of terrors. There dwells in his tent nothing of his. Brimstone is scattered on his abode. His roots are dried below, and his branch is cut off above. Memory of him perishes from the earth, and he has no name abroad. He is driven from light into darkness, and chased from the inhabited world. He has neither offspring nor posterity among his people, nor any survivor where he sojourned. Those in the west are appalled at his fate, and those in the east are seized with horror. Surely such are the dwellings of the unjust, and this is the place of him who does not know God. 1 Corinthians 5 It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, 
and sexual immorality of such a kind as does not even exist among the Gentiles, that someone has his father's wife. And you have become puffed up and have not mourned instead, so that the one who had done this deed would be removed from your midst. For I, on my part, though absent in body but present in spirit, have already judged him who has so committed this, as though I were present. In the name of our Lord Jesus, when you are assembled, and I with you in spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus, deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of his flesh, so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Your boasting is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Clean out the old leaven, so that you may be a new lump, just as you are in fact unleavened. For Christ, our Passover lamb, also was sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people. I did not at all mean with the sexually immoral people of this world, or with the greedy and swindlers, or with idolaters, for then you would have to go out of the world. But now I am writing to you not to associate with any so-called brother if he is a sexually immoral person, or greedy, or an idolater, or a reviler, or a drunkard, or a swindler, not even to eat with such a one. For what have I to do with judging outsiders? Are you not to judge those who are within the church? But those who are outside, God will judge. Remove the wicked man from among yourselves."